Hey, Paul Stacy here. I'm in Warsaw, Poland. I'm on a kind of busy road. It's, it's all cobblestones. Uh, and so when the cars and buses go by, it's going to be a little bit noisy. I'm here in Warsaw for the Open Policy Forum. Uh, the forum was put together by a local organization called Centrum Sofrova, who did a really great job of bringing together people from across Central and Eastern Europe and beyond, people like myself from Canada, others from Norway, from the Netherlands, from the United States, people who are engaged in creating and implementing open education policy in different parts of the world. <laughs> yeah, the forum gives us a, an opportunity to think about and compare the open education policies that we're creating and, and try to design ones that have the greatest likelihood of success. Um, day one of the policy forum uh, focused in on something called, um, let me show you, uh, the Cape Town Open Education Declaration, which, which was written over 10 years ago, back in 2007. Last year, uh, 2017, was its 10th anniversary, and this document was produced that describes 10 directions that build on the Open Education, the Cape Town Open Education Declaration and take open education forward in positive ways. It's really useful and interesting to think about those 10 directions for open education and the inspiring, uh, st still inspiring even today, the, C the Cape Town Open Education Declaration itself, which, which I signed a long time ago. Um, I, it's really interesting though to think about the declaration and the 10 directions as um, being something that we need to incorporate into open education policy. Let me walk along a little bit. Um, in the evening, we, we heard stories from people who are engaged in open education, and that includes like children who are, who are uh, benefiting from open education in their schools, adults who are engaged in advocating and supporting open education in different countries around the world, and even researchers. And it's always so incredibly inspiring for me and others, I think, to hear these stories of how people are engaged with and benefiting from open education. Um, my colleague Igor Lesko at the Open Education Consortium and I did a talk on, uh, on, the, on day two on the link between sustainability and policy. And I think this is actually a really critical issue as open education transitions from being sort of an innovative startup project, uh, which you kind of, you know, a startup project, you kind of try, see if it works. It clearly works, generates benefits for people all around the world. And it's kind of transitioning now to something that's a kind of more mainstream, more just a regular part of education operations. And it's really important for us to think about how policy supports that kind of sustainability and that kind of uh, process of making it mainstream. Um, day two uh, focused uh, on um, the integration of the OER policy registry, which is a collection of open education resources policies from around the world into something called the Open Education Resources World Map, uh, which is a map that uh, represents and is a, a, a single place where open education people and initiatives from around the world can um, put themselves on the map and describe their various programs. And the integration of the policy registry into the map will actually further enhance the OER World Map's value as a central place to find out about open education initiatives around the world. I'm actually here in a part of town called Praga, which, which is sort of the poorer part of town. It's on the other side of the river from the, the main central business district and the parliament buildings. Um, but it's really kind of, it's, I, this is where I've been sort of staying as I've been here at the Policy Forum and I've been really enjoying it, my part of town. Um, and every day I've been walking by this building that's behind me, um, which is wrapped in aluminum foil. Let me show you. It's, it's kind of cool. <laughs> I like the way the shutters are wrapped. Uh, even the signage and the windows and brickwork up above all wrapped in aluminum foil. <laughs> it's actually a, a little cafe during, it'd be kind of fun to go in. Um, I, I really like actually this piece here. Uh, let me see if I can, if I can get the camera to, yeah, see the satellite dish wrapped in foil. <laughs> Anyways, I've been reading a little bit about uh, 
the artist who who did this <coughs> um, and and let me read you a little piece of this uh, what it says here it says uh, the aluminum facade in its very subtle and sensitive way shows and uncovers architectural beauty and proportions and its shabby brick walls full of wounds and scars become delicately wrapped in aluminum which symbolizes changes and development as well as a brightly cosmic future yeah so as i've been walking by this building i've been thinking about how it's somewhat like open education policy policy wraps all around education and defines the rules by which open education is done by it by the rules by which education itself is done and in some ways open education policy is kind of dealing with wounded buildings like this one dealing with an education system that needs transformation and it's kind of coding it in a way that makes it uh, shiny and part of a brightly cosmic future <laughs>